Welcome back, Killer Community. We're back with another Shep Reacts, where I react to some AI, artificial intelligent created documentaries based on ideas that I got from ChatGPT, some things that I kind of threw in there and created an AI documentary that I have not watched. I am saving it uh, for a reaction and these are unique to this channel. You will not see these documentaries anywhere else. So this documentary is called Interstellar Odyssey, a sightseeing trip across the solar system. I thought this might be kind of a, a neat little documentary, something about, you know, what would it be like to travel across the solar system? Something a little bit more closer to our time frame. If we had uh, some, some basic technology to be able to do it, what would life be like? And that's what's neat about these documentaries is that we can really customize it and have our own little thing, something that you don't really see anywhere else. So let's check this out. Ever thought about what a sightseeing trip across the solar system would be like? Imagine setting off from Earth on a ship equipped with the most advanced technology mankind has to offer. We're talking about a vessel powered by impulse engines, capable of traversing the vast distances between celestial bodies with ease. This ship would need to be massive, large enough to accommodate a crew and all the essentials for a journey that could span years. Imagine a gravity system on board, mimicking the pull of Earth to allow for ordinary activities like eating, sleeping, and socializing. You'd walk down corridors, not float. Food? We'd need a self-sustaining supply. Perhaps a hydroponics Ooh, bay, growing fresh that. produce to supplement meal rations and keep us healthy. Life aboard this ship would be an exercise in adaptability and human ingenuity. Now that we're ready, buckle up as we set off towards our first stop, Mercury. Welcome to Mercury, the smallest and closest planet to the Sun in our solar system. This diminutive celestial body is a world of extremes, a place where temperature fluctuations are as dramatic as the landscapes. Imagine, if you will, a day that's hot enough to melt lead, swiftly transitioning into a night so cold it could freeze carbon dioxide. Such is the life on Mercury, owing to its lack of an atmosphere to regulate temperatures. And let's not forget its incredibly long day, spanning nearly 59 Earth days. It's an intriguing place, isn't it? Whoa. But landing here? Well, that's another story. The extreme conditions make it impossible for our ship to touch down. Despite these challenges, Mercury's unique features provide an exciting start to our journey across the solar system. Mercury, a world of extremes, sets the tone for our journey. Now we head to Venus. Say hello to Venus, Earth's twin in size and mass. This celestial beauty has an allure that's simply mesmerizing. But don't let Venus's beauty fool you. This planet spins in the opposite direction to most other planets, a phenomenon known as retrograde rotation. It's a topsy-turvy world where the sun huh. rises in the west and sets in the east. I don't remember reading Venus's about that. Venus's thick atmosphere, composed mainly of carbon dioxide and clouds of sulfuric acid, creates a greenhouse effect that makes it the hottest planet in our solar system. The surface temperature? A scorching 467 degrees Celsius. That's wow, that really is hot. Hotter than the surface of Mercury, despite being further from the sun. Landing here is a feat few spacecraft have achieved, and human survival is impossible with current technology. On board our ship, maintenance and repairs are a constant necessity. Using advanced robotics and a well-stocked inventory of spare parts, we keep everything running smoothly. Venus, a beautiful but deadly world. Our next stop, however, is more familiar, the moon. Behold, our closest neighbor and only natural satellite, the moon. A sight familiar and yet full of enigma. It's a world of extremes, with the sunlit surface reaching temperatures hot enough to boil water and shadowy craters colder than Pluto. Yet, it's the moon's lack of atmosphere that makes these extremes possible and gives us that iconic starry backdrop that astronauts rave about. The moon's surface, a desolate terrain peppered with craters and valleys. You know, that does not look like the moon. Uh, especially when they're just kind of standing there and there's a lake or an ocean over there to the side. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think that is, uh, <laughs> that's not the moon. Is a testament to its violent past. It's a place where our footprints could last for millions of years, undisturbed. And landing? Well, we've done it before, haven't we? Now, communication oh, with home doesn't come without its hitches. With a delay of just over a Some second, it's argue. like talking to someone at the end of a very long hallway. An echo of our words, 
bouncing between Earth and space. From our closest neighbor, we now venture further to the hey, red look planet, at the dark side Mars. of the moon. They were right all along. There are secret hidden bases on the dark side of the moon. Pink Floyd was trying to tell us something. We now venture further to the red planet, Mars. Welcome to Mars, the red planet. Named after the Roman god of war, Mars is a world of wonder and mystique. Its reddish hue, a result of iron oxide or rust, paints a hauntingly beautiful landscape, stretching over desolate plains and towering volcanoes. Mars' atmosphere, thin and mostly carbon dioxide, is incapable of supporting human life as we know it. Yet the idea of setting foot on Mars isn't a far-fetched dream. It's a goal within reach. With the right technology, we could land and even establish a base. Imagine stepping out onto the red soil, looking up at a sky tinted pink by the setting sun. And what about life? The search continues, but tantalizing hints suggest Mars may have once harbored microbial life. Imagine discovering we're not alone in the universe. On our spaceship, waste management is crucial. Human waste is processed, sanitized, and repurposed, ensuring nothing goes to waste. Repurposed? Huh. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Star Trek. They were saying that it got repurposed and was used for, like, tools and stuff. And then you've got uh, Star Trek Discovery, where they were saying it was reused uh, and to make food. Ew. Mars, a planet that holds many secrets, but now we venture into the asteroid field. Brace yourselves as we navigate through the asteroid field. This is not your average field, folks. Picture a cosmic shooting range with rocky remnants from the solar system's birth, ranging from tiny grains to massive boulders, all whizzing around in a chaotic ballet of celestial proportions. The asteroid field, located between Mars and Jupiter, is a testament to the tumultuous formation of our solar system. Now, how does our spaceship sail through this rocky sea? With advanced detection systems and nimble propulsion, we sidestep these space rocks like a skilled dancer. But what if something goes awry? Fear not, on board we have an emergency medical bay equipped with state-of-the-art technology. From minor scratches to major traumas, our medical droids are programmed to handle any situation that might arise. So, as we elegantly weave our way through this celestial obstacle course, we're reminded of the raw, untamed beauty of space. Having navigated the asteroid field, we now approach the gas giant Ju- That's a neat looking ship. Hey, look at that ship right there. You've got little solar panels over here. Of course, you're gonna need solar panels in order to have renewable uh, energy. You got this ring here, which uh, I'm assuming is creating gravity and you got your boosters, your engines here. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, be nice if they had like a more closer look at that ship. Maybe that'll be another documentary. Let's see, something along the lines of what would the first interstellar spaceships look like? I don't know, could be interesting. Maybe I'll, I'll write that down and uh, maybe that'll be a future uh, Shep Reacts. Welcome to Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system and its fascinating moons. Jupiter, known as the king of planets, is so colossal that over 1,000 Earths could fit inside it. Its most distinctive feature, Look the Great that. Red Spot, is a storm that's been raging for centuries and it's so massive that it could swallow two Earths whole. However, we won't be landing on Jupiter. Why, you ask? Well, Jupiter is a gas giant made up mostly of hydrogen and well, helium similar to the... <laughs> no suitable stock footage available. <laughs> okay, that's new. Um, I was not expecting to see that. That's interesting. Like I said, I've not watched these before. So, I mean, if I was to uh, create an actual documentary, you know, I wouldn't sit there and put, you know, no suitable stock footage available. So, uh, anyway, that was <laughs> unexpected. And in helium, similar to the sun, there's no solid ground to land on. Just imagine trying to land on a cloud and you'll get the idea. But <laughs> let's not forget again. about Jupiter's moons, over 60 in total. Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, is even bigger than the planet Mercury. It's the only moon known to have its own magnetic field, a fascinating phenomenon that scientists are still exploring. Then there's Europa, another of Jupiter's largest moons. Beneath its icy surface, scientists believe there may be twice as much liquid water as there is on Earth. Could there be life hidden in these depths? Only time and further exploration will tell. 
while we marvel at these celestial wonders. They're really trying to hammer home the point that there's no suitable stock footage available. <laughs> no suitable stock footage available. Yes, uh, considering that we haven't landed on any of these moons or stuff, well, yeah, of course there's not s stock footage. <laughs> Life aboard our ship continues. Today, the recreational activities include a zero-gravity volleyball tournament and a lecture on the mysteries of the Jovian system. For those who prefer quieter activities, the observation deck offers a spectacular view of Jupiter and its moons, that a sight would be that's cool. sure to inspire awe and wonder. Dinner tonight will be a rehydrated feast, featuring dishes inspired by the cuisines of Earth. Oh, and don't worry about yum. the food running out. <laughs> Our hydroponics bay ensures a steady supply of fresh greens. From the giant Jupiter, we move to the ringed beauty, Saturn. Behold Saturn, famous for its ring system and its largest moon, oh, Titan. there it is. This gas giant, the second largest planet in our solar system, holds a beauty that is hard to match. Its iconic rings made of ice particles and small rocks create a celestial spectacle that's nothing short of breathtaking. However, landing on Saturn is nothing more than a dream as its gaseous nature makes it impossible for a spacecraft to find solid ground. Now let's turn our attention to Titan, Saturn's largest moon and the second largest in the solar system. This moon is remarkable for its thick, nitrogen-rich atmosphere, denser than Earth's. What's more, Titan is the only other place in the solar system where we found bodies of surface liquid but instead of water these lakes and rivers are made of methane and ethane. Yeah. Imagine seeing a methane lake under an orange sky. Quite a sight, wouldn't it be? Leaving the ring cool. wonder, we journey to the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. Welcome to the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. These outermost planets of our solar system are a chilling contrast to the fiery worlds we visited earlier. Uranus. Okay, he needs to make up his mind. It's either Uranus or Uranus, because he said both. I mean, let's go back and listen. Giants Uranus and Neptune. These outermost planets of our solar system See? are a chilling contrast to the fiery worlds we visited earlier. Uranus, the seventh planet from the sun. See what I mean? <laughs> AI can't even get it straight. It's like one or the other, I mean. <laughs> it spins on its side, likely the result of a colossal cosmic collision in its past. This gives it extreme seasons, each lasting 21 Earth years. Next, we move to Neptune, the furthest planet from the sun. With winds reaching 2,000 kilometers per hour, it's wow. the windiest planet in our solar system. These winds whip around. Okay, now, if you're a truck driver, don't be driving that uh, empty trailer and winds like that, okay? You'll flip over. But hey, as long as you have a full load, I yeah, you might be okay. <laughs> 2,000 kilometers per hour, it's the windiest planet in our solar system. These winds whip around its dark, cold, and supersonic atmosphere, creating massive storms. Both Uranus and Neptune hide beneath thick, gaseous exteriors, making landing impossible. Instead, we can only marvel at their mysterious beauty from afar. That's the beauty of space exploration, isn't it? The unknown, the unreachable, the unfathomable, they all contribute to our curiosity. From the ice giants, we head to our final stop, the dwarf planet Pluto. Finally, we reach Pluto, the dwarf planet. Despite its small size, Pluto is a world of wonders. Its most iconic feature is the heart-shaped glacier known as Tombaugh Regio, a testament to the huh. surprising geological activity on this icy world. That's interesting. The surface of Pluto is a frozen landscape of nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide, with temperatures plunging to minus 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Our journey doesn't stop here, though. Beyond Pluto, there's a vast frontier to explore. From the Kuiper Belt's icy objects to the Oort Cloud's comets, and perhaps even interstellar space. Imagine the mysteries waiting to be uncovered. In retrospect, our sightseeing trip across the solar system has been an awe-inspiring journey from the scorching Mercury to the icy Pluto. We've seen diverse landscapes, experienced life on board a spaceship, and pondered the possibilities of future space travel. The universe is a captivating place and we're just starting to scratch the surface. This ends our sightseeing trip across the solar system, a journey filled with wonders and challenges alike. Okay, there we go. That was an interesting video. <laughs> that was an interesting video uh, as far as traveling, sightseeing across the solar system. And it, you know, talked about, you know, in between some areas of some activities and stuff. You know what I think would be uh, an interesting video um, other than the one that I talked about the spaceships, and maybe that could be part of it too. But what would life be like 
uh, going to the closest star or going to uh, another planet because I think they've actually found some uh, planets uh, out in a system that's so far away that it would it would have to be a generational ship but it would be interesting it would be an interesting documentary as far as what kind of ship would need to be built to go out that way and the types of engines and uh, renewable energy preventing space madness um, stuff like that would the ship need to be kind of like the size of like a, a small town or something maybe that's too much but yeah no i mean if you're going to be sending like colonists or something like that oh and communication back to earth um how long would that take is that even feasible see that would make a great uh documentary and that's why i'm saying uh with these ai documentaries we can get really specific and and have something like that created so if you got some ideas you know let me know in the comments below and uh we'll, we'll put something together and uh and watch it together it be a that'll be fun all right so i hope you enjoyed everything thought that was a really neat video and uh one of my cats is <laughs> making make it what are you doing wow wow <laughs> anyway i guess i better go give them some better some uh some attention thanks for watching i'll see you in another video have a killer awesome day